has been our fearless leader, and I would like to introduce to you our champion, our trustee, our chair of our capital campaign, the most wonderful Edward Norton. Uh, good morning, and thank you all for being here. It's a very, very exciting day for all of us who have been uh, working on this project. I want to say for the last few years, but it's really been uh, a 20-year journey um, from a 99-seat black box theater uh, down on Bond Street in an old Japanese cultural center uh, where Jim Houghton first uh, inaugurated and launched this mad uh, delusional dream to build a great institutional theater for American playwriting. And uh, 20 years later, uh, here we are. And I think that um, I, I have to start just by saying that, that in my uh, 21 years living in New York and working in the New York theater, I think that uh, Jim Houghton has, for me, been one of the great inspirational figures of my generation in the theater. People talk a lot about uh, great theaters of the past, Harold Thurman and the group theater, or Joseph Papp and the founding of the public theater. Um, I think that, uh, I said last night that I think, uh, I used to say Jim Houghton was the Joseph Papp uh, of our generation, but I think uh, moving forward, uh, now people are gonna uh, aspire to be the Jim Houghton of their generation, because he has really been uh, an, an inspirational figure in the arts and in New York theater, and it's, it's entirely his vision that's brought us here today, so I wanna celebrate that. behind Jim. Um, he's very persuasive. Uh, uh, you have to be to uh, you have to be to get people to rally behind you um, and in the middle of the worst uh, economic downturn in living memory go out and convince people to uh, uh, build a place where you can play dress up and pretend to be other people. Um, but, uh, but we would not have gotten here uh, despite the incredible vision of Jim and the incredible hard work of Erica and the signature staff and capital campaign, none of it would have happened if people uh, hadn't bought into this vision and rallied uh, around it. And um, some sometimes you, you just go after what you need. But if you're lucky, you get not just what you need, but the kind of people who you actually really want <coughs> to work with and want to spend time with. And I think that beyond the success of the campaign to uh, gather the support to build this project. To me, the really, really uh, exciting thing is that the people who came together around it are actually the kind of people that uh, give me optimism uh, about this city, who uh, it's expanded all of our uh, lives and experiences to get to know. Um, I, I, I think that that we've done much better than raise the funds for this. We've, we've really uh, uh, assembled a community of people who have a phenomenal spirit um, of, of service to the community, service to New York, uh, and service to their fellow citizens. And I do want to acknowledge uh, a number of them because uh, uh, they aren't just names on the wall. They're people that you should really know uh, what they've done and the spirit in which they've done it. First, I just want to start with the city of New York. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, Department of Cultural Affairs, Kate Levin, Patty Harris, Speaker Christine Quinn. Um, you know, in, in an era when it's very easy to be cynical about politicians, uh, to use a word, uh, we forget sometimes that we really do have people who are, not, who are public servants, uh, in the truest sense of, of those words, public servants, serving us, serving the public's interest. And in, in, in a time, uh, in, a, in an economic environment, when the arts is, is being cut all across the country as, a, as an elective that people think is unnecessary. The city of New York has committed to continue investing in the arts, understanding that it's part of the backbone of the New York economy and that accessibility to the arts for everybody is one of the defining characteristics of this city. And so I really can't say enough about what our city officials have done to support this project. It has been an extraordinary uh, financial commitment and a spiritual commitment to what the arts mean to this city. So thank you all. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about a woman named Margot Adams. 
Lawrence, who is one of uh, many great members of the Signature Board. But Margo, uh, Margo, Margo's husband was a, 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 a career theater actor, and um, Margo uh, was the first person to really step forward in a major way behind Jim Hutton's vision and say, I'm going to seed fund this. Long before any other money was raised, when the risk was fundamental, Margo provided uh, the, the early gift that really, really launched this project and gave us the momentum uh, and the, the, the funds to, to move forward and start to build this campaign. Uh, Margo, you're, you're an inspiration to all of us, and thank you so much for having uh, uh, really put this uh, uh, on the rails and moving. Um, Uh, Barry Diller and Diane von Furstenberg, uh, I could talk for a long time about what Barry and Diane have done for this uh, city. They are uh, just extraordinary, extraordinary uh, friends, uh, patrons, uh, and supporters. And um, Barry Diller uh, parked his Jaguar in the middle of the crosswalk uh, <laughs> over there on, uh, in the middle of a snowstorm, uh, left it there, and, and walked in here walked around for a half an hour and turned to me and said, uh, these kinds of things are magic. Uh, they will be creating magic for other people long after all of us are gone and we're in and they were one of our first big major contributors uh, and that big beautiful staircase. Uh, they, they <laughs> um, as if uh, the mayor hadn't already done enough, but Bloomberg Philanthropies also uh, stepped up as a major supporter of this. And I want to talk uh, briefly about Anita Contini and Irena Stennett with a thousand watt smile, who uh, out, on the, out on the curb after she came through here, uh, turned to me and said something I'll never forget, which is she said, uh, don't, don't uh, ask for what you think you can get, ask for what you need. Tell us what you need and we'll do it. And they did and uh, I thank you, Irena and Anita, you guys are great. Um, The Andrew Mellon Foundation, this is a foundation that's been supporting Signature since the third season. That's 17 years supporting this company, perpetually expanding uh, the nature of their support and uh, just um, one, of, one of our most core supporters, uh, and we, we thank them so much, uh, Susan Fetter and Katie Steiger and, and everyone at Mellon who have supported us uh, as long as anyone really who's been behind this company. Thank you. The Ford Foundation, uh, two amazing guys, Louis Sabinus and Darren Walker, who are two of the greatest uh, philanthropist, activist, uh, superheroes in America, let alone this city, uh, having Ford's, um, having Ford's imprimatur and affirmation is like a triple A uh, gold seal on any project, but, but these two guys in particular have been hugely personally supportive to me and Jim. Uh, they were some of the first to get in behind our our affordable ticket initiative, and they're just fantastic um, and a great asset to our city. A great, a great friend of both Frank Gehry's and mine, Richard Cohen, uh, whose sage advice and, and support has been a huge help. Um, the Philip and Janice Levin Foundation, uh, Adam Levin and Heather McDowell and Bill Farber were the very first people that we asked uh, personally uh, beyond our board. <laughs> And when no one else had said yes, they said, we don't care. Uh, we have faith in you. We know we're going to get there. And they supported us. Um, then I want to talk about uh, John, Amy, and Alice Griffin. And this is just a great story. When I say uh, that, that we really have a feeling that there's some kind of good karma around this project, the Griffins are a perfect example. Uh, John Griffin uh, is a friend of a friend of mine. Came through here and kind of like, I couldn't really tell what he thought about it. And he turned to me and said, well, see, here's the thing is my dad was a playwright, and my mom, Alice Griffin, was uh, a theater critic her entire life uh, and wrote books about some of your playwrights, and I've been looking for a way to honor the spirit of her passion uh, for theater. And so the theater behind you over here, um, the Alice Griffin Theater, is named for Alice, and I think it's so amazing. Uh, we go through so many places, we see names on things. It's so amazing to know that uh, this theater is named for someone whose entire uh, life and passion have been dedicated to the playwrights and the craft of what we're going to do here. So we're absolutely ecstatic and grateful to the Griffins uh, for knitting up their family story and their legacy with ours. Thank you. Uh, and then finally, um, 
someone else who just kept saying, uh, I want to do more, uh, Bill Ackman and Karen Ackman and the Pershing Square Foundation, uh, whose name you now see uh, gracing our marquee uh, at the Pershing Square Signature Center. Um, to say that, that these guys made an extraordinary commitment is, is to uh, undersell it, or it's a time when language um, actually falls short of the actuality. These guys stepped up and, and said to us, listen, it's not just that we, we believe in what you're doing. Um, we, we think building a theater is great. But what we really think is great is the idea that uh, if theater is important, if, if the ideas uh, and, the, and the culture that, that gets shared through a theater is important, then it really should be accessible to everybody. We're not in the business of, of um, helping people who already have a lot have more. And if we can uh, commit to making this theater something that, that everybody uh, has access to, then we want to do it not just for 10 years, but for 20 years. And the Pershing Square Foundation has made a commitment to signature not only for some of the capital to help us finish building this site, but to uh, ensure that we have underwriting for 20 years of tickets at an affordable price uh, to all New Yorkers. And I think that it is not, it doesn't go too far to say that that is that is a landmark moment in the history of American theater. Uh, that has never happened in the history of American theater, that every seat to every show at a major theater institution is gonna be made available uh, to people of all walks of life, all income levels. It's gonna change the demographic of what's, uh, who's in the audience, not just what's on the stage. And it's truly, truly an extraordinary contribution. So thank you so, so much for for <laughs> say uh, that Jim, um, Jim Houghton, who's going to talk to you now, I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, what makes, what makes uh, an extraordinary combination uh, in my field, it's any, any actor can tell you that, that artists are not necessarily uh, the greatest uh, uh, institution leaders or, or <laughs> things like that. It's very, very rare that you find someone who's a great artist, actually a great director who I've been directed by twice. Um, an institutional visionary uh, and actually possessed of a, a, a strong spirit uh, of public service. Jim Houghton is all three of those things and it's an extraordinary combination. Um, if he wasn't busy enough, he also runs the Juilliard uh, Drama Division on the side, making him officially the only person I know who's busier than me. <laughs> and um, and uh, truly one of my heroes, so Jim Houghton. <laughs> 